Hey, how you doing? Justin here without a guitar today because I'm going to be talking about some software that I use all the time. It's called Guitar Pro. I'm sure many of you have come across it before. It's a fantastic tool for guitar players. I've been using it for well over 10 years now. I use it in lots of different ways and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to show you a few of the different ways that I use this stuff. I'm a big fan of the company. They're constantly striving to make the software better and better. It's grown incredibly over the last 10 years, I particularly like the last couple of updates have introduced some incredible features that make it even better to use. I should point out that even though this is probably going to sound like an ad, they didn't pay me to do this. However, if you buy Guitar Pro through a link on the website, not only do you get a discount on the price, but I get a kickback as well. So if you enjoy this video, please uh, go and check out uh, the buying links. There's probably going to be one in the video description or over on the website. So there are four main ways that I use this software. They are as a transcribing tool. When I'm transcribing a song, I often put the notes directly into uh, Guitar Pro. I use it as a practice tool. So often when I'm learning something, I'll use some of the features in Guitar Pro to help me practice. I use it as a creative tool. Often when I'm trying to write an arrangement of something, I find it a little bit easier to start on guitar, put it into Guitar Pro, and then fiddle with it a little bit there where I don't have to play it. I can sometimes invent things that I might not be able to play straight away or that I have to practice to be able to play. And of course, I use it as a teaching tool, as many of you will probably already know, because lots of my lessons over on the website are available in Guitar Pro format as well. So what I want to do is just take you through some of the ways in each of those four categories. I'm just going to cut to a, a Guitar Pro. You'll still hear me talking, of course, but you'll see the Guitar Pro screen. And I'll take you through just some of the basic things that you might want to check out. So let's just start a new file here, just give you a very quick look around. We've got electric guitar. We need to start off with a thing. Let's do a clean electric guitar just to show you what's going on. Now, obviously, here's the six strings, and all you need to do is type a number in, and you get the note. And you can use your cursor to just move around the strings that you want. You can put in a chord by putting things like that. You can change the duration of the note just by using the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard. So, and then you can play it back. Inputting the notes in the tab is going to be relatively easy for most people. The struggle will usually be adding the rhythm to the notes. Now I've got a, actually a course on how to work out the rhythm of things that you want to play. It's called Rhythm Maestro. You might want to go and check that out on the website. That is one of the areas where if you're trying to add a transcription, if you're trying to use Guitar Pro as, as a transcribing tool, you need to be able to understand your rhythm. But luckily, it's also really good for learning about that because you can actually experiment with the rhythms in real time. The, if you get the wrong number of beats in a bar, the bar will turn red so that you know oh, something is going wrong here. Then you have to do a little bit of detective work. But again, you can use your ears. You can play the thing back and go, oh, how does it sound? This should be faster. This should be slower and experiment. I think experimentation is probably not the best way to learn to read rhythms and to write rhythms. I would recommend going to check out my course or doing one of my study books on rhythm reading. I've got a, a book out on that as well you might want to check out. But really, if you've got an understanding of rhythm, then inputting the notes in a Guitar Pro is great. You don't need to write the dots. It does the dot stuff for you. So what I want to show you now is a feature that they've only just released, and it's pretty incredible. It's adding audio to your transcription. So if I just add audio file, now I'm going to use a song by my friend Ariel Posen. He uh, kindly said that I could uh, use his tune for this. He's an incredible artist. If you don't know his work already, go and check him out. Incredible guitar player, great songwriter, great singer, whole package, amazing productions. Uh, and this is one of my favorite tunes of his. So I thought I'd sh use this as an example on uh, how to import it in. And you can see here now, the, uh, down the bottom here, we've got the waveform of the song. But what we need to do is to tell Guitar Pro where beat one is. So you just want to have a listen to it first of all that would be beat one i need to actually just i'm just going to move forward and click this little plus to give us a few extra bars there in the music go back to the beginning again you'll clearly hear that this little uh bump here is where beat one is one two three four one so what we need to do is just move this beat here to there that's saying there's beat one now let's listen again And there, just here, is going to be the next bar line. So we just move that over to there, and hopefully the rest of it's going to sync up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. OK, 
Okay, now it's going to cycle around those little bits. You see there we can just add, uh, move along the cursor here and uh, click the little plus thing and it'll add extra bars in the guitar tab. You can also sync it if it starts to go out of time. Two, three, four. Yeah, it's still, still looking pretty good. And you can see now that the cursor is moving along. Ah, see, it's slightly out of sync here, so I'd move that a little bit. It just needs to be general. This idea of having the bar line, the music scrolling along with the audio, is really good for a whole bunch of reasons. You can then cycle a couple of bars if you're trying to work out just a, a little bit. Let's say you're just working on these uh, these two bars. I've just randomly selected a couple of bars, but then it'll cycle between those two. Two, three, four, back again. Now, also, you can notice when you look at the waveform, because it's showing where the beats are in the waveform, uh, you can then start to decide where you think the beats might fall when you transcribe it. It gives you a little bit of an indication as to whether it's right, whether the note's falling right on the beat, whether it's falling exactly halfway between the beats, like eighth notes. It's not a substitute, again, it's not a substitute for learning the rhythm, but as a tool, it's absolutely incredible to be able to get the audio into the same tool where you're typing up your tabs. So let's have a go at just transcribing this so you can see the way I might input it. So you can hit see that this first note is falling on beat two, so we need a rest there on beat one. So I'm just selecting the crotchet and hitting R for rest. Then it's a da. Da, da, da. Well, let's just look. Da, da. So this is falling halfway, so these are going to have to be eighth notes. I didn't know that, by the way. I'm just uh, helping you see. Da, da, da. Da, yeah. Da, da, da. There, that's falling right on beat two, right? Da, da. Da, da, da. Uh, listen again. And there, da, that, that next note is falling right on the beat, so this one must be. Oh, I don't want to triple it. Eighth note, and then da, da, da. Ba, that's falling right on beat four, and now look at the next bit. Da, da, da. And then this little slide up to here is happening exactly halfway between beat four and beat five. So that has to be an eighth note again. And then this is going to be fives and it carries on over the bar. So we select those two, we hit L and then it ties it over. Now you can see here, I just had the track there muted because I didn't want to necessarily, gets a bit confusing if I'm, Kind of, it's okay. I can listen to it on its own by muting the audio track here. Now I can just listen to this. Okay, obviously it sounds a little bit funny at the moment. We can get that slide up to that. I think it's going to be a too fast a slide really, but... Hopefully you get the idea that being able to just select these little... In fact, let's make that uh, not a, a red bar as well, just to for complete. But you can see getting those two bars and being able to repeat with the audio track. As a transcribing tool, being able to get the audio into where you're adding the transcription is very, very cool. Now, Guitar Pro also has things like drums in it as well, and bass. So depending on what sort of arrangement that you want to do, you can take it quite a lot further and start exploring adding drums and bass parts into your transcriptions as well. Just as an example, and this was a long time ago, 2015, the sounds have improved and I'd probably be able to do a better job of this uh, if I did it again. But just so you can hear now, we've got the lead guitar part here. We can also look at the rhythm guitar part. We can look at the bass part and we can look at the drum part. All of those things are there. You can even, if you choose, you can look at it as a whole score with all of the instruments going at the same time, but I'm not gonna do that for now. But just so you can see the solo and how it lines up here.
Now, it's fairly rudimentary MIDI in this particular one. Most of it's probably down to my uh, subpar programming than the limitations of the software itself. But the ability to be able to add in a drum part and a bass part is really, really helpful. It'll teach you a lot about music because you'll start to explore what the drums sound like. What does the bass line do? How does the rhythm guitar and the lead guitar interact with each other? All of that sort of stuff is really, really beneficial for your musicianship. So as well as being great for transcribing, it's great for practice too. Quite often you'll find when you're learning a song for the first time, you need to slow some parts down. So once you get things into transcribe, whether you're using a real audio file or whether you're using the kind of the MIDI backing thing, you can start to slow the track down really easily and be playing along with it. And of course you can loop it as well. For example, let's say these two bars here, you're working on this. but you're finding this 16th note part a little bit difficult, you can very easily just head over to here and go, well, let's have it at 80% of the speed then. Still too fast, knock it down a little bit more to uh, 70%. You can see it's just looping now. I've got the loop button up the top there, so it's gonna go around those things over and over. So being able to slow things down is really useful. Being able to loop sections of songs is really useful. I already mentioned loads of my lessons have guitar accompanying guitar profiles. So being able to use them for things like scale practice, being able to program in the scales that you want to learn and playing along with them, making sure that you stay in time, that you're not missing any notes, that kind of thing. Maybe not for more advanced guitar players, they shouldn't be missing notes. But for beginners, if you're worried that you might be doing that, you can program in the things that you want to do. Just a simple eighth notes. Again, you don't have to worry too much about the rhythm there if the, if the notes to consistent and you can just play along and adjust the tempo as you improve. So like pretty much everything on guitar, learning Guitar Pro is going to take you some time and it's going to take some effort. It's pretty intuitive software, but you're going to have to take the time to learn how to do the things that you want. If you're struggling with stuff, I'd strongly recommend you check out a friend of mine, Levi Clay. He's got a series of excellent tutorials on how to do the audio sync, how to work effectively in Guitar Pro. He's a professional transcriber, uses it all the time. In fact, I think he did the all of Ariel Posen's tracks. So Ariel, who, whose track I used a little earlier, you can get transcriptions of all of the guitar parts off his records in Guitar Pro already. Perfect way of uh, experimenting with the slowdown software and the looping, all of that sort of stuff. So do go and check out Ariel's packs on that as well. Just to show you a couple of ways I use it for creativity as well. Uh, this is a walking bass line that I was working on for Fly Me to the Moon. Okay, so I just programmed it in there. I worked it out on guitar first, but it's really nice just to be able to explore things like how we get to that note. Maybe instead of four, we could do it, try a six, and then I can hear it. Okay, I, actually I prefer that, walking up there, but you can see the idea here. I can just start to fiddle straight away. Maybe that one could be a, a semitone step up to here. Actually, that works really nicely. So you get the idea, being able to do things on Guitar Pro like that, I can hear back what it's going to sound like straight away before I put the effort into practicing it. Now, for things like finger style patterns, that can be really useful as well, because finger style patterns are things that need to be programmed, especially if they're going to get complicated. Sometimes it's nicer to be able to work it out in Guitar Pro, figure out what the pattern is going to be, and then program your hand to do it, because you already know what it's going to sound like. You know that it's the thing that you want to work on. You can slow it right down and start working on that muscle memory, but otherwise, the alternative would be having to do the muscle memory first, then deciding you want to change it, but you've already learned it with a fingering that might be less than ideal. So as a creative tool, Guitar Pro is also really, really fantastic. So just a quick example of a finger style thing. Maybe we have a, a little pattern like this. Uh, and then uh, we might want a bass down there. And then... Uh, Open string here. Uh. <laughs> this is literally random. Okay, so I was looking for having this alternating bass thing going on here. but maybe I want to have uh, another note on there. <laughs> uh, 
that this is, or maybe I don't want that one there. Or maybe I want to put this here. And then we've got these little cascading things down here. Maybe that there and then that there. You get the idea. You can just start experimenting and going, well, what if I do this? Now, it requires some sort of knowledge, some foundation skills that you need to know. You need to know what a starting point finger style pattern might look like and then get creative with it. So it's not something, it's not a, the very, very beginning. It's like you've got this skill set. You can use this to grow the skills that you already know and get super creative with them. Now, I did mention already that we can have drums as well. So uh, we, let's just start off with a little drum kit here. You can see now we've got all of these different instruments here. If you've never done any drum programming before, a really good starting point is having this hi-hat. And the hi-hat is going to be on all of the eighth notes. That's how I'd recommend that you start off with doing this. So just add in a whole bar of eighth notes. Okay, then you've, that's literally one end, two end, three end, four end. And then on beat one, you want to add a kick drum. So you're just clicking on here. Beat three, you add a snare drum. Where's the snare gone? There it is. Beat three, sorry, this beat two, the snare drum. Beat three, you add a kick drum as well. And beat four, you add a snare. Oops, there. So if you're doing that, that's a basic straight eighth drum pattern. Obviously, you can change the, the speed here a bit as well. That seems a little bit fast to play around with for now. It just doesn't really matter. But you can start to experiment with things like changing that last hi-hat to an open hi-hat, for example, if I do that. So then you get this. Or maybe you put another kick drum on here. So you can start to learn a little bit about how drums work, about what the pattern is. Or maybe get rid of this, that one. There's all sorts of different little creative things that you can get with here. So if you've always wondered how drums work, you could start with a real basic drum groove like that and just experiment, learn a little bit about how that works. Again, if you want to take it a little bit more seriously, you could import a track that's got a drum groove that you like on it and start working out how to program that drum groove by experimenting, by looking at the little waveform. If you get a better understanding of rhythm, you'll straight away hear, oh, there's a snare drum on two and four or the and after four, whatever. It, you can start to really visualize what the rhythms are. Really, really great for your musicianship again. As if this didn't already sound enough like an ad as it is, it's also a fantastic teaching tool. If you're doing any teaching, Guitar Pro is a fantastic thing to be able to give your students so they can work on stuff at home. So whether you're giving them scale patterns or songs to learn or bass lines to check out or whatever it is, being able to program up a little thing and then send it home with them so they've got this kind of interactive sheet music rather than just having to write down stuff on a piece of paper. Really amazing tool. So if you're teaching guitar, I would definitely recommend that you check out Guitar Pro. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video and maybe got a few ideas of things that you might use Guitar Pro for. If you want more tutorials on Guitar Pro stuff, let me know in the comments what it is that you'd like me to do. Would it be more transcribing stuff, more how to use it as a practice tool? Do let me know in the comments. I'll see if I can't make a few more videos. Now I've finally figured out how to record my screen and get the audio to sync up and all of that stuff. Do remember to use the Justin Guitar link to buy your software so you get a discount and I get a little kickback. I really appreciate the support. Have yourselves a fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye-bye.